everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. In today's matchup, we should have a fun one on our hands. It's the Eagles coming in at two and seven, going up against the Browns, who come in at eight and one. So let's send you up to Pennsylvania. Standing by in Philadelphia are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Okay, Larry, thank you. We are just off I-95 at the home of the Eagles, Lincoln Financial Field on the south side of Philadelphia. Tonight, we wrap up Week 11 with a good Monday nighter between the Cleveland Browns and the Philadelphia Eagles. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, you look at this Eagles team as they interplay here. They come in feeling good after back-to-back -back victories. Meanwhile, for the Browns here, they have certainly got it rolling of late. Winners of six in a row. And it's simple. The more you win in the regular season, the more likely you play at home in the postseason, and that can take you deep into January. The NFL season has hit high gear, and off we go in Week 11 on EA Sports. This is taken at his four. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. So now here comes the Eagles' offense as they get ready to take over. And leading them, Charles, their quarterback, their field general. First play will get him back to the 25, but that's going to be in. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Brandon, that play ended so fast, it's almost as if the quarterback handed it to the runner, and the tackler was there right away for a loss of yardage. Three down, three down. Hey, check, check. Here we go now. Green, 39. Green, 39. Out of the gun. They'll look to throw. Quick hitter here. It's complete. And they'll get nine there as that sets them up better for third down. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. Whoosh! A big seam, and he might go all the way. Touchdown, Philadelphia. A big play there, hitting double digits with his 10th touchdown of the season. And the Eagles have taken the early lead. You talk about explosion plays. There's one pretty much right out of the gate. And now they get to ride a wave of emotion, momentum, everything. Just as you just as you described, right out of the gate. Big sprint, touchdown. They're excited. But on the other side, they've got to guard against a major letdown because they hit them right in the gut with that one. And now you start to question yourself a little bit when you give up a touchdown on the opening drive. He's got it, and the Eagles lead at 7 zip. So they only needed three plays on that drive. The result, Philadelphia in the end zone. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This one fielded at the five. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. So here come the Browns for their first drive on offense. And leading him out, their veteran quarterback. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Going right side here, and that's complete. 12 yards on the pickup, and it's good enough for a Cleveland first down. They sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. Oh. 
And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. And a look at the offense that is hoping to put some points up in bunches here in this one. now out of the gun and he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48 that second down run a big help the seven yards leaves him with just a third and three now that's why the guy with the headsets is down there all right they know what they're doing because they got stuffed on a running plan first down and i think myself and probably the fans were saying throw the football in this situation but he knew what he was doing called another run and now they've got third and short and he might have got this across midfield, not by much. They'll mark it down at the 49. The ball's still a few inches shy of the marker after the three-yard run, so now a little soul-searching on fourth down. It's really simple to say that they know their identity, that they are a shotgun he'll look to throw and this is incomplete boy it looked like he had it and dropped it and this defense will take over right near midfield at the 49 yard line and he'll have a tough time living that one down it's one thing Charles to drop a pass it's quite another to drop it on fourth down and so many teams work on that in terms of locking in on those key downs you know I've seen you know you and I've both been to practices where we've seen Hey, third down situation. Big third down alert. Lock in here. Fourth down play. Make sure you focus just a little bit extra. Tight ends on Ringo. Tight ends on Ringo. Tight ends on Ringo. Three over. Over. Ten. Over. Ten. Over. Ten. Now they'll run it on the toss. <laughs> what a spin. <laughs> and he's going to be out of bounds, but able to take it inside the 40-yard line. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. So this game's not very far along. He's already found the end zone once, and now he started this drive with another big gain, another first down run. I've got to wonder if I'm the defensive coordinator. What do I do in this situation? It's only the first quarter, but do I go ahead and sell out and try and slow him down and make him beat me another way? Because the risk is if I don't, he ends up having a monster game. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. The wide receivers, often a very, very talented group, and that's the case here. And they don't mind showcasing it either. Those guys love to be flashy, love to make big plays out in the open field. They will attempt to do so in this game. Second and five. He's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. Call it a gain is seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run. And at that yardage gained, they can run that play on any down. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Green, 39. They go play action here on first down. And he just gets rid of it, throws it away. A wise move there, looked like nobody open. Now second down. And that linebacker group today could be very key. As we were preparing for this game, you pointed out to me as we were watching film that the linebackers look like an elite unit. I agree with you totally. They move around, fly to the football, and take it away from offenses. It's a five receiver set, three to the left, two to the right. He'll try again with the arm here on second down. And he comes back with one complete. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme, and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. 
Okay, no score on that play, but this guy's been a touchdown machine all year long. You know they trust him with the football. They'll give it to him right up the gun. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. A five-yard gain, and now they're set up first and goal. And it is still early, just the first quarter. But you start prorating the numbers, and we might be in for some history. I mean, that last run puts him over 100 yards already, and we've still got three quarters to go. They come out here in the eye. Now they'll run it on the toss. And he's in. Touchdown, Eagles. A great effort there. With touchdown number two in the game and now 11 on the year. And the Eagles had six to their lead. Well, he told us he was going to hit the end zone a couple times in this game. I just don't know that he envisioned doing it in the first quarter. He probably did. I'm not sure we, <laughs> we did, did yeah. right? Because all the great ones, that's what they do. They dream about it, right? They think about it. They envision it. They think it's going to happen and almost will themselves into it. I just look at what he's done so far and just wonder what's left to come. Let's sit back and enjoy this one. This is taken at the three. <laughs> and he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And last time this unit was out here, costly turnover, and then that turned into six points. They've got to make amends. And how many times have we sat in meetings with coaches and they use the term complimentary football? <laughs> offense take care of the defense, defense take care of the offense. That didn't happen on the last possession. This is a chance for them to pick themselves back up and help their team. Yeah, we'll see if they can recoup and recover. Partner, your thoughts on this D-line? I love a unit that can control the run and get after the passer. This is an all-around terrific defensive front. Hard to move the ball against them on the ground, and then when you want to throw it, look out. Here they come after the quarterback. They'll come out in the pistol. And they'll run it here. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. A lot. It's four there, and it's third down. And the Eagles will go with an extra DB here as they prepare for a stop on third. Thinking pass all the way. He's going to wind up and air it out. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. A big play that time for Cleveland. 43 yards. Here we go. One, nine. One, nine. They'll look to throw here on first down. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? And what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. Two yards on the pick up there, but it's enough to give them a new set of downs. Well, we always talk about good down and distance allowing offenses to expand their playbook. A second and two, that means your playbook's wide open. You can run just about anything. But a lot of times, the play caller, he just looks down at his sheet, sees the short yardage runs, and goes to one of those. A good pick up there, a 22. That's a big league run. Takes him down inside the five-yard line, and momentum definitely on the side of the guys on offense. And if you're an offensive lineman, you love to run the football, especially out in the field where there's some space. But I would go check out a little bit of a secret. Those guys like it in tight, too, because they get matched up and they get to show just how stout they are in a tough situation. They're recommending they run it again. And to give this time to the tailback. And he is going to lose yardage here. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. The defense won that play so fast that I think if the running back even had time to notice if anyone was there, it was just a blink of an eye, and there was a loss on the play.
Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. They'll run it now out of the gun. And they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the 10-yard line. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. On goal-to-goal -goal runs, when you create lost yardage plays, the only way that happens is either called pressure or what I like to call straight-ahead pursuit. A great read, and they get to the backfield and make the play. And that was a big chunk of yardage lost. An extra defensive back on the field here for third and goal. On play action, they'll throw. And that's going to be caught for a Browns touchdown. Their big tight end, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Browns have cut it back within a score. Well, the lost sleep that the defensive coordinator had all week preparing for this game, a good portion of it was trying to prepare for him because yeah. he's absolutely a phenomenal player. And a lot of times around the goal line, they know it's going to him. It's just so hard to stop. And that's where it really becomes difficult because you're exactly right. They know it's going to him, yet they still can't stop it. That tells you when you're a dominant player. And his kick is good. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This is fielded at the chalk of the 10. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. Getting set to go again as we look at the back heading onto the field again. And he's found the end zone twice, and now I'm guessing he's thinking, hey, let's find it three times. And you got to figure from the defensive perspective, how has he gotten there twice? What are we going to do to keep him out for a third time? How do we tighten things down? Because he and his offensive mates, they are really in sync right now. He's up to about the 37. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. That was another good run, and he's having an excellent day. And right now, I don't think his team could have any more confidence in handing him the football. They'll run it now out of the gun. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. I thought guys that were over 30 weren't supposed to run the football this well in the National Football League. How about that veteran leadership? A big-time run combined with some nice blocking by his offensive line. Showing that the ins and outs of being a veteran still has his place in this league. His odometer is not totally turned over yet. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Now that's the type of play that'll fire up a defense, hold them to one yard on a first down run. It'll be interesting to see if the offense decides to press the run at all, or if they'll abandon it now after gaining only one on that play. They'll come out in the pistol. Now a handoff here to his running back. And some room to maneuver. And he's brought down. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. Really good, skillful, tough running throughout this contest. Picked up first down after first down. He's got to have a nickname, doesn't he? How about the human first down machine? I think that fits. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. They come out here in the eye. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And he'll be brought down just outside of the 30. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll go down at the 28. So we played one quarter here on a Monday night. 14-7 is the score. This is the NFL on EA Sports.
This presentation of the NFL on EA Sports is brought to you by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Back live with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. It's the Eagles with the ball here to begin quarter number two. And they're on the move here. They've got it first and ten. And they'll go with a ground attack here. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. A one-yard gain can look like a disaster, but it all depends on how the game is going. Is it a series of one-yard gains running the ball? If that's the case, you might have to start thinking about throwing it a little bit more. But if it's just the occasional one-yard run, hey, congratulations to the defense. They won that one. Come back and get them the next time. They'll give it to him right up the gun. <laughs> And the spin looked pretty, but more for style points as the real estate evaporated quickly there. Let's give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've been able to move the ball really well on the ground the entire game, and while that wasn't a huge one, that's okay. They'll take them in short, steady bursts. So third and seven and an extra defensive back on the field here. Definitely want to play coverage here. They'll look to throw here. Letting one go deep for the end zone. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. And nobody was open downfield there. Looked like a pretty clear throw away. Yeah, definitely was that. I'm wondering why there wasn't intentional grounding. I know they're saying there's a receiver there in the area. Those darn quarterbacks, they get away with everything. <laughs> Spoken like a true defensive back, Mr. Oh, did, Davis. Did, did that come out? It did. Oh, okay. So in the end, they had the ball for 10 plays, but the drive only yields three points. Yeah, they were able to move the football, but the defense stiffened once their backs were to the end zone, and they were able to hold them to just three. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This fielded at the two. <laughs> and he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. We focus our attention now on the Eagles' defense. And a touchdown given up the last time they were out there, so maybe need to refocus a little bit. And make sure that they don't start finger-pointing with each other, because oftentimes when a touchdown's given up, you say, okay, where did that happen? Who broke down? Who gave it up? Instead, just go back out there, be a unit again, and try and play a little bit better. Yeah, see if they can play a little bit better on this drive. Now a play fake here on first down. Deep drop. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. They juked him. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from it. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. Here we go. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. And a diving grab. I think he got that. Yes. A very nice pickup of 33 yards. But simply no sense in wasting a great catch like that on a short gain. Get downfield like you just <laughs> did there and use it up that way. No dink and dunk. And now a first down following that long gain. Here we go. One, now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. Not too many things get to a quarterback of this magnitude, but I think it's safe to say that pressure can get to any quarterback. Now he's obviously a great franchise quarterback, but felt the pressure, threw it incomplete. They come out here in the eye. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, and it'll bring up a third down. No gain on that run, and while this team is down, they're not out of it by any stretch of the imagination. Maybe you just have to think about different style of running in order to get this go. guy going. On third down, he'll drop to throw. Eagle pressure, too much this time. Down he goes. He couldn't get away there on third down. The pressure too much, and he's sacked for a loss of 12. 
Well, many times when you talk about mobile quarterbacks, you get the sense that they feel like they can get out of any bad situation. They keep moving around and trying to emulate guys like the scrambler or the dodger. Instead, they keep losing yardage and losing yardage and digging themselves a hole that they can't get out of. The Browns send out their punter now as he's on to punt for the first time tonight. And a great job here. This is going to turn out to be a beauty. This is marked down at about the three-yard line. And now the Browns defensive unit trots back out. And with a deficit here, they gave up the field goal last time, but with this deficit, Charles, how important is a stop on this drive? Extremely. And you know that they heard it on the sideline. You know they heard it going out onto the field, and they're telling it to each other. No more points given up. We've got a chance to still get into this game. As a defensive guy, you kind of like that challenge. You don't want to be down, but do you like that challenge? You don't want to be in that position, and you wish you had taken the challenge a little bit earlier, but now <laughs> this is it. It has to happen at this point. That first down play, all you want to do is wedge out any type of space and try and create enough room. If you have to run the punter out there, he can successfully complete the punt. Yeah, he didn't get a ton there, but at least some positive yardage. They'll give it to him right up the gut. They'll try to get forward, but he's going to be stopped in his tracks at about the three. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. But that certainly felt like an example of the defense just saying, OK, <laughs> we've had enough. We've gotten mashed all night long. About time we got a good play in. But flip it over to the offensive side. They've got to be really upset that they allowed a play like that to happen. They were pitching such a great game. They want to keep it going. So a ways to go here on third and 10. From deep in their own territory, they look to throw. Then he can't hang on to it. Nearly picked. He's known for his hands defensively. But instead, it just brings up fourth down. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum, big play, right in his hands, unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense if that fell harmlessly to the ground. And he's able to get it out of there. And this is a pretty good kick. And taken right at the 35. A very good return that time. 18 yards. Now the Browns have a short field in front of them now as they take over first and 10. Now out comes their leader and the captain of this offense back onto the field. Been a decent start for him here in this first half, but bottom line, his team's losing. They got to fix something. And it starts with him. He has to keep that little quarterback strut going right now to make sure his team sees him as confident continue to try and up his game, but just let him know, hey, if I'm around, if I'm the one calling signals and throwing the football, just follow me, we'll get there. Sometimes that will do more to elevate a team than anything else. See if he has that confidence. Really tough drive, but that run helped salvage something there because now there's something positive that came out of it. They got to see good blocking, good push by the offensive line, wide receivers trying to get involved, a good run by the back. And now maybe it'll be a catalyst for them to look at. Going forward, watching it on tape, maybe they can keep incorporating that type of a run into their offense. They'll wind up losing three, and now it's third down. When you're putting together a formula for winning defense, it's exactly what we're seeing in this game. Controlling the line of scrimmage, attacking, and changing everything so that now they're playing in the offense's backfield. They're playing an excellent game. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Well, they brought in an extra defensive back here, so probably not expecting a run on third and three. A good call. And he will find his man on the outside. And he's going to get to the 31, enough for the first down. We heard them talk before the game about utilizing the intermediate passing game this week. It works for them there. They move the chains. And we saw them work on it in practice as well, and most teams take a period at it to work on different things. They put a couple of periods...
They'll give it to him right up the gun. He winds up getting only a couple there, down to the 29. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. And to give this time to the tailback. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. With the struggles we're seeing up front for the offense today, they've got to think about changing up their play calling. Some screens, some draws, some quick hitting plays in order to try and supplement the run game. You don't totally abandon it, but you try and give it a little bit of help. The play action fake. They'll look to throw, surveying the field. That is caught at the seven. And out of bounds all the way down at the two yard line. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. And here comes play number six on this drive. They go play action here on first down. And he'll score. Touchdown, Browns. It's their quarterback with touchdown number 29, two short of LaDainian Tomlinson's all-time record 31. And the Browns are back with it a score. Now they'll line up to kick the extra point. And this is up and good to make it a 17-14 game. So that drives seven plays in length. And it's capped off by the Browns' touchdown. So just a three-point game now as they send this one away. This will be fielded at the eight. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. Automatic first down. They come out here in the eye. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he'll take this one up close to the 25-yard line. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Another two-yard gain there, but they'll need to do better this time. It's third and six. Well, praise has to go to the guys on the offensive line because they've had a very nice, productive day running the football. How about that poor defensive line? They've been knocked around the entire game, and while they slowed them down on that run, can they continue to do so because they haven't had much success throughout this ball game? Throwing right, and that's complete. He gets seven out of it, and he also gets a first. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. And he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. Back to throw now on first down. Finding time. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack.
And he'll give it here to his running back. Look at the spin. Not much room here as he only gets it to about the 30. Only three yards on the pickup. They'll be left staring at a third and 14. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. Green, 39! Green, 39! Out of the gun now on third down. He's got time in the pocket, and that is incomplete. Partner, how many times have you heard it? Pressure creates diamonds, right? <laughs> but it also bursts pipes. And on that one, that's what they got. They got after him, and he was fortunate just to get rid of it. Yeah, he just had to chuck it away. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. This will be fielded at the 17. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Out comes this field general once more, leading his offense back onto the field. Been a decent start for him here in this first half, but they're losing. And I think as the captain of the offense, you probably always feel like you need to do more in that situation. The best have always felt that way, and they won't settle for anything less. So right now, his goal is to pressure from his right, and he goes down hard, flat on his back. That one will set him back nearly 10 yards here on first down on the sack. Well, they go play go. fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Quarterback gets hit. Yeah, nothing doing here is this time the run maybe gets him back to the line of scrimmage, but that's it. Time to step aside. We'll come back to Philadelphia after this. A reminder that coming up in two minutes, we'll check in with Larry Ridley in Orlando with highlights and analysis of this first half of play. And I'm going to check in with a heater. I'm going to be right there with you, partner. And some secondary help here, here for the defense in the nickel on third and long. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll go down just now the Eagles going to signal for a timeout. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. That'll be a 41-yard punt, four yards there on the return. And possession will switch hands first and 10. And out now come the Eagles. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. If you're running out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up and making sure it was a catch. So the offense has it first and 10. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. Wide open receiver complete. And he'll take it into the end zone for an Eagles touchdown. Their dangerous wide receiver, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Eagles are able to strike quickly for six. I think if you pulled defensive backs, they would say the corner route, take that out, make it illegal, because that is so hard to recognize and so hard to adjust because your first move is to not get beat in the middle of the field. And that's how they move you first before they break off to the corner. But then as the wide receiver, great job. It's tough to turn those upfield and go, but he did a great job with it there. Really good balance, really good body control. And how about the end result? A touchdown. Extra point forthcoming. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. 
Well, it wasn't a one-play drive, but I think they'll take it. The scoring summary, two plays and into the end zone. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This will be taken in at the one. They'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. Heading out as the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Well, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Give him a couple on the catch. It's second and eight. Looking to speed things up here, going with some tempo. Out of the gun. They'll look to throw. And he's got it. Got his man on the end round. Complete. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. He'll look to throw. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. Give him a couple on the catch. It's second and eight. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. And they still need eight yards for the first here on second down. Again, we'll see the pistol here. Again, he'll drop to throw. And this is going to be caught. He won the fight for the football. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Now a play fake here on first down. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And all the way in, touchdown, Cleveland. A big play there with touchdown number seven on the year. And the Browns have cut it back within a score. I think everyone in the league talks about finishing, don't they? Doesn't matter whether it's a quarter, a half, a game, a series, whatever. But they're finishing the first half in fine style, putting that one in the end zone. They did, and they didn't leave much time on the clock either. Well done. It's up and good, and this now becomes a 24-21 ball game. Five plays there on that drive, and it ends with a touchdown for Cleveland. The Browns kicking team out there now as they'll send this one away. This one taken from the seven. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. And Philadelphia ready to get going on offense again. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. That confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. A second spin. Turning and turn. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. They'll look to throw now on first down. He's got time. Looking for his running back, and he's got him. And this time, he's able to take it down to the 42. Give him three on the play, and it'll be a second down. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. And they'll go on the ground. 
And he'll take this one down to about the 40. Give him three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. And on third down, the Browns going to go with a nickel set. They'll throw down on the final play. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. So we've reached halftime in a wild first half. We'll take a minute to catch our breath as we send you down to Orlando where we check in with Larry Ridley and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Larry. Thanks, Brandon, and welcome to our EA Halftime Report. I'm Larry Ridley. The Eagles have done a good job today stepping up, and they lead after two. The Browns really looked great last week, but it hasn't been so easy for them in this one. All right, let's get straight to it. Here's some highlights from the first half. Go to early in the first. Fantastic run blocking here, and he takes it 66 yards for the score. The Eagles is up now by seven. Eagles have it at the four. They'll go with the run here, and he counts off the seven play drive with the score. That puts them on top by 14. Midway through the first quarter. Here the pass is completed into coverage, and he'll end up at the 35-yard line before being tackled. Browns later on the drive. The connection is made in the middle of the field, and this play will go for six, cutting the deficit to seven. Third down from the 30. Broken coverage here on the pass play. He will pick up five yards and then duck out of bounds. Continuing on the drive, he'll dart to the left side on the run, and he caps off the six-play drive with the score. Now trailing by just three. Now first and ten, quick pass and completion is made here, and this goes 52 yards for the score, pushing the lead to ten. Browns with the ball late in the half. The quick pass and completion is made, and this five-play drive goes for a touchdown. The Browns now down by just three. Thank you, sir.